Welcome to the behind the scenes for Henry Ford vs. Karl Marx. Oh. 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 Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to the behind the scenes of Harry Ford versus Karl Marx. My name's Nice Peter. Uh, with me, as always, is Epic Lloyd. <laughs> hey. It's good to be back. And the rest of our wonderful crew. And his new haircuts. Ooh, Keanu. Whoa. All right, John's new haircut. You guys went different directions. <laughs> We're having a good time making battles in kind of a slightly new way. We're trying to do more ahead of time. So as I make this video, sit down to talk about how we made Henry Ford versus Karl Marx, it's not finished yet. Usually we're making this kind of video like scrambling right before it's supposed to come out like tomorrow. But in this case, it's in post, we're taking our time with it, and we're already working on one that's three from now. Karl Marx versus Henry Ford has been a suggestion that's been around for a long time. I think about a year ago, we ended up putting out an audience poll on our YouTube community page that you guys all voted on. And by far, the overwhelming response was Henry Ford versus Karl Marx. Hey, hey. hey buddy. Ah. Ah. Hey. <laughs> I always thought it was a little bit dry, but I was pleasantly surprised at how interesting and colorful these characters were once you sort of dove into them. We've been doing a lot of pop culture lately. We did the Johns, and then we did Indiana Jones and Lara Croft, and we really needed a little bit of history. Straight up. Straight up history. And what could be more historical than the world's biggest capitalist versus the world's first communist? The new Rheinisch Zeitung was a German daily newspaper published by Karl Marx in Cologne. Don't get that close without some beard shampoo, son. You lived in Cologne and look like you could have used some. Yeah, that's great. When me and Lloyd started writing this battle, we didn't know a thing about Henry Ford versus Karl Marx. We can make some jokes about communism, but the problem is we've covered communism, kind of. We made the, these rhyme skills are not evenly distributed joke already. We can't make that one again. So we had to sit down and learn about what he actually said, what he actually wrote. To each according to his needs, to Lloyd according to his knees. <laughs> I just read his books. I read The Communist Manifesto, which made me nervous. I read Selected Writings by Karl Marx, Das Kapital. It's so interesting when you read and you realize the things that he's saying that pertain to like the workforce and the labor force seems so normal to me now, but that was unheard of. No one had ever thought of it in that way. Human sweat equity as a product in and of itself. That was really the first steps of where Karl Marx was really important. Making it clear that the proletariat, the working class, was not to be undervalued by the bourgeoisie, the upper class. In truth, what you produce were alienated working men who would clock into Detroit and lose themselves like Eminem. And now your Great Lake State ain't exactly a great sight. You were worse for Michigan than Fritz Water <laughs> Henry Ford was a mysterious dude. He's great and kind of awful at the same time. Come on, you commie son of a bitch. <laughs> there was so much about Henry Ford that we learned that didn't even end up making it in the battle, but we had to know about him. I don't think we made a joke about Thomas Edison because he was a big, uh, his big homie of Henry Ford. They were buds, they were bros. I'm a sick son of a bitch. If you think about it, before cars, it was like dirt roads and horses. And because of Henry Ford, the entire planet looks different. I had a worker on my assembly line, slow, but I beat him to a bloody pulp. That's why I be like this guy, cheerful about his atrocities. How did I prepare for the role of Henry Ford? If you look at pictures of Henry Ford, there's a kindness to his face, but there's also something very uh, stony. What is it about his face? I don't know how to explain it, but I, I tried to capture it a little bit. It's kind menace, right? It's like dangerous friendliness, dangerous cheerfulness. Evil, evil and bizarre, this man. That's about right. Okay. I was eating some sticky gum and it got caught and unfortunately I had to shave my entire mustache. I'm using it as an exercise in humility, but I can't wait for the bitch to grow back, you know? Now keep the lips pinch close and say one, two, Three. One, two, three. So what kind of exit would Karl Marx have? 
Well, he was never recorded, so we can't know for certain, but he was Prussian, which is basically now Germany. So his accent would probably have been sort of like German and maybe a little bit Russian, but not either of those things exactly. How long have you been growing this beard, Carl? Since I was seven. But I knew it would have a base in German. So I'm studying the German accent by David Allen Stern. If you have to ever learn dialects, this guy's great. The point of maximum vibration for the given accent or dialect. Now in standard American speech without an accent, which I just switched to, I personally use... Come on, man. The air coming through your mouth comes from a different place than when you're speaking as an American. It doesn't go over the tongue and under. It kind of goes straight through the tongue. My consul didn't cause mass grease. Greed did. It's not easy to do. I wanted to have it be not a stock German accent. Having done Hitler already, I sort of already burned this one. I also didn't want it to be too much like Gorbachev's accent. Did somebody say birthmarks? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Did I just forget the alphabet? Hello, friends. Welcome to a little peek into a couple of the post-production things of Henry Ford versus Karl Marx. So there's Henry Ford. It's just me standing in a green room. The first thing I do sometimes is add color to the footage. It comes out of John Nye's camera in a raw format, so it's really flat. So sometimes before applying the chroma key effect, I'll boost the colors first so the greens get really loud. There's a little trick we did. We're always looking for ways to get characters on and off screen in some sort of organic, natural feeling way. And this, it's just kind of rotating like a clock. That guy goes that way, this guy swoops in. Henry Ford leans in a little bit, so we just exaggerated that with this little turn. Here's an interesting sequence. Let's take a look. Henry Ford kind of dances around himself. This is actually a few different clips. This Henry Ford here is gonna go away. If I get rid of this front dude, you'll see that this Henry Ford, that, yeah, this Henry Ford, look, even the performance, I'm like, that sucks. Look, <laughs> I turn around because I messed something up. But I just got rid of him and put a new guy in, a different take. So when you put the front guy back in, you can't tell. So it looks like the same continuous performance, but it's not. And then we'll render that out. Just keep going, keep refining it. And eventually it's a video. Oh, hello. Tell my brothers Boffer, Bofer, Beaker, and Blooper <laughs> that uh, I'm gonna be late for the search for the golden ring. Just got, a, just got a late start this morning. Shout out to the hair and makeup on this. They do immense work. I thought I was gonna be in the makeup chair for like five hours. I was in and out of there in 90 minutes. Bing, bang, boom, all of a sudden I'm- Karl Marx, prepare to be right I'm dropping you like Hitler, drop your name and mine calls. My clothes of didn't cause mass grief. Read it. You get that from books, but you didn't read shit. To play Karl Marx, I kind of wanted to get in there. I wanted to feel what kind of a person he was. I have a nephew who's a hedgehog. <laughs> what I kept coming back to was how agitated he was and how grumpy and itchy he was. Give me a good cross scratch for the dick boil line. <laughs> he was like, ah, he was always in sort of a grouchy mood. I got out of bed for this. Come to find out, he had a skin condition. It was called, um, hold on, I got it here, it's a really one. Hydrodentis superativa. Hydrodentis superativa. Hydrodentitis superativa. Superativa. Hydradenitis superativa. Fuck. But it made him very uncomfortable and it always put him in a bad mood. And there's some theories that say a lot of the reason why Karl Marx wrote the way that he did was because he was always itchy and uncomfortable and it just made him a big crank. And that is what gave us communism. Wanna just give me like a mean mugging with the yeah. guy? Yeah. <laughs> the benefit of being in Los Angeles slash California is that there's a lot of things already set up here for the TV film industry. I knew that there were car people in Los Angeles. I've seen an old Ford driving around my neighborhood. A lot of antique cars are around here. So I knew we could find them. We looked around some stuff and we were able to find Rex who had his own Model T and was so easy to work with. You drove this here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to pay for a trailer. 
My mind is blown. That is wood. Yeah, yeah, wood, wood. <laughs> the thing has wooden wheels, man. And he drove it to the set. He was great. They're early, helped us out. Fantastic to work with people like this. How fast does it go? 45, because you know the two, the 110 freeway? That's what it was built for, these guys. They, oh, you know, really? That's why oh, that's that little so on-ramp thing is so short, <laughs> because we didn't need that much speed to get going. One of the things was, if you'll see in some of the behind the scenes footage, is that we shot the car part outside. We did not take the car onto the green screen. Pete doesn't want to go inside. I'm, and I'm also happy with not going inside. Just, just too much old gasoline, all that stuff in here. Oh, okay. We're going to enjoy riding it. Huh? But then what we had to do is John and Andy had to come up with a system to shoot that car. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. It's all right. You know, if you didn't say it, I would believe you got some green screen around it. I don't know how they did it, but they really got a nice warm light on there. And that was all gonna be fine. And then the morning of the shoot, it was the hottest day so far of the year in Los Angeles. So it was a smoker. And something about the seats in that black Model T, they turn into butt ovens. It was toasty, toasty. I was comforted the whole time that at least I wasn't Lloyd. We're outside, I'm dressed like Hagrid, and I'm just filled with goop and grease and sweat. I was like, I guess this is how Karl Marx felt every day. Oh my God, it just is God, it's hot in here. It was tough. He's such a trooper, man. He never complains. But we got through it. It was fun to be on the Model T. It was fun to sit in it. I didn't actually drive it. I just kind of pretended and bounced around. But we had a good time. I produce with my two hands. You're a destitute tramp. Scheming to trade bootstraps in for food stamps. Any person tried to seize my private property. You catch a car, you property. Nice, very good. We've been shooting in two days a lot, but today we're doing it in one day, mostly because we wanted to try to get Henry Ford and Karl Marx on set together so we can interact with each other, which always makes things a lot easier. I gave 10 homeless guys malaria. Yeah, no, I'm one of them, and I don't have any insurance. And so, because we're on set at the same time, to help us direct, we brought back our very good friend, the very talented Ryan Moulton. For a man to say so this, you've got an awful lot to say. I'd pay you $5 a day to go away. Ryan Moulton reads Epic Rap Battles of History to a third grade class. Crammed with machines cranking out four severed fingers a week. <laughs> Ryan Moulton, one of our old editors from season three, season four, season five, joined the crew in the director's chair. I took a step back. Oh man, did I enjoy it. I'm so glad no, you're here. I mean, that works for me. Ryan just allowed Pete and Lloyd to focus on their characters and not worry about directing stuff. He can just then work with them to get the performance he needs. Having the editing background really can see things and be like, I'm gonna use that, I'm not gonna use that, or the editor will be able to use that or not use that. So. It was great. Like the, the biggest like profile image I've had in my mind so far is just like Mark's going in for, for that. Um, like the end of his first verse. Nah! Yeah, Nuts. exactly. And that's like, like Brazil. Exactly. Nuts. Yeah, exactly. Woo! Yeah, exactly. I think one of my favorite pieces of Ryan Moulton's editing work is the Austin Powers first verse. That was very much Ryan Moulton. The way it flows together, the way the comedy beats are a little unexpected. They're not just on the downbeat of the music. You gotta see it. It's, there's something special about the way he sees comedy. So it was really exciting to have him back. We're looking forward to having him direct again on our next one. Thanks, Ryan. I'm one of a kind. You're always getting remade. You can't touch me. You may have seen this on our Instagram page, but we recently shot a class for a place called studio.com. And it was a really amazing experience. We got to put cameras inside the studio for two full days and pick, write, record, demo, an entirely new rap battle from start to finish. It's a really raw, fly on the wall way to see how we write the raps that we write. If you'd like to take the class, we'd love you to check it out. Studio.com slash ERB, links down below. Ready? Yeah. I'm moving around, I'm Henry Ford, I'm testing if it's noisy on camera. The process of finding the suits was a little bit different on this one. Because we knew we were gonna do it so far ahead of time, we were able to order pieces and own them. Normally we rent stuff. And in my case, I think I got it kind of custom tailored. I found this suit on Etsy that was this three piece suit. It's a nice suit, turned out good. Hey, I feel comfortable, it's comfortable. Yeah. Huh? Then with Lloyd, I found a coat from his time period and it was from the same area too. I ordered it from a seller in Germany and we took it to a tailor here in Los Angeles and just made it a little bigger, a little wider in the back for Lloyd's. Lloyd's got the surfer swole. These are all a little baggy. I got a lot of wind in me. Prepare to be rhymed, stomp. From your newspaper to your nosy battery, cross the pause. Exactly, Hank, it's clear as we 
Thanks for watching the battle. You guys are awesome. If you'd like to jump in a little bit deeper on what we do and how we do it and even contribute a little bit, there's a Patreon page that we value very much. It's patreon.com slash ERB. We have really affordable levels and we'd love to have you come on into the fold, into the ERB crew. We'll give you a big hug. You believe in Patreon, bro? What? It's exactly what we're all about. Thanks for watching our behind the scenes. Thanks for watching our battle. We'll see you again soon. We've got a lot more stuff in the oven. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. I'm tired. Let me get this wig off my face.